Good question. Um, all believers have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, scripture says that if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have Jesus. So yes, absolutely. All believers have the Holy Spirit. The, the issue that comes up with people that's divisive is, um, is being filled with the Holy Spirit, yeah. something that happens in addition to that. If it does, if it is, how does it happen? When does it happen? What do you have to do with it? Um, and that's, I think, where most of the conflict comes in and most of the arguments come in, you know, regarding the Holy Spirit. What yeah. do you think? Well, uh, absolutely. We have the Holy Spirit because of salvation. But I think it's that question of, like, what does it look like to be filled, baptized? You know, there's so many different words in the New Testament that they use to talk about that experience of having the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit come over you. Now, I think the real question people are asked is, do I have to speak in tongues as a sign that I've actually been filled with or baptized in the Holy Spirit? And there's debate on that. I think where both of us would fall is that, no, you don't. Because Paul says, you know, not everyone speaks in tongues, but he doesn't make the connection that that means that you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, I think a lot of people do get that gift when they get filled. But, you know, speaking personally, I'm sure you could speak to the same thing. You know, how did we know when we got baptized or filled with the Holy Spirit? You know, for me, somebody prayed for me. And, you know, where it's purposeful, and, you know, Holy Spirit come, fill them up with fresh power, fresh presence. And I could feel the difference. There was something that changed inside of me. One of the things is I felt like I began hearing God's voice with a greater clarity. Like kind of a little bit of the confusion over am I hearing, am I not, began to dissipate. Um, I also got spiritual gifts kind of activated. Mm -hmm. Definitely in seed form, but I did get the gift of tongues. And I think a budding gift of prophecy, it was actually you and Mike that were praying for me. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys both felt like, hey, there's going to be a gift of prophecy, which really goes along with just hearing God more. Um, and I think there's other things. I mean, I think for most people's experience, when they get filled with the Holy Spirit, they just feel a fresh power in their life to overcome things and to minister to other people. I, I mean, what was your experience with that? Well, I think I'm just backing up as we're talking about it, thinking through things. And sometimes we draw the distinction between the fact of the Holy Spirit being in us, which comes with salvation, mm -hmm. and the experience of the Holy Spirit. But actually, it's all an experience. Because the, the whole idea is that if you know Jesus, you have had the experience of the Holy Spirit coming in that has triggered in you that understanding of who he is and triggered faith, giving you the gift of faith yeah. that comes into play. So you've had the experience, although you don't think of it as an experience, you think of it as something that you decided, you know, all on your own. And it's only after the fact that you realize that it's actually the experience, the first experience yeah. of the Holy Spirit that enables us to get it in terms yeah, of yeah. who Jesus is. And then following that, yes, then it's the, I think, that, that personal exclamation point that comes in with the experience that becomes more, pul more palpable in our, yeah. in our lives. And the gift of tongues is a common one. It's the same thing with me. I got the gift of tongues when somebody laid hands on me and prayed for me and encouraged me to open my mouth yeah. and begin participating in the process. It wasn't so much the gift of tongues, but it was, it was the experience of a sense, and I don't know how to describe it, uh, but of the presence of God, yeah. of the of the sense that God is real, God is here, God is is recognizing me right now, and He wants to give me the encouragement that He knows me and that I can know Him in a different way. Yeah. And all of it kind of comes together with that experience of excitement that says, "Wow, this this, this opens the door to, to all sorts of new new things," and and I think it leads with most people. I know it did with me, and I think with you too, to the continual pursuit mm. of more experiences of God. Now, that can get us off on the wrong track because it can lead to just the whole wrong direction with, with experiences that go beyond actually living life the way He wants us to. But, but it wants your appetite. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. If it's a pursuit, a pursuit of His presence yeah. as opposed to a pursuit of just seeing amazing things happen, yeah. then then it's a healthy thing. It's what God wants us doing. It's just like in a marriage. You continue to pursue your wife. I continue to pursue yeah. my wife. It's the way it's supposed to work in a relationship, that pursuit of. And I think that's what the the filling of the Holy Spirit does. Mm. It It's a culmination, in a sense, of an initial pursuit yeah. because we have to take action towards it. But it, it actually opens the door to the lifetime of pursuit that we move into. I think that's a really important thing, too, that you're saying, if I can encapsulate it, is this whole thing of the filling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's relational. Yeah. 
Absolutely. It's just more interaction, more relationship with the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And which is really important because yeah. sometimes when people talk about it, they just get weird. I don't yeah. know about you, but yeah. I feel like you don't have to be weird to get filled with the Holy Spirit. But it's what gets weird sometimes is they look at it as this force or this power or just this experience. Yeah. Not remembering that it really is just more of his presence. It's yeah. getting to know him better. And then allowing him to work through you more yeah. and in you more. Yeah. No, exactly. I, I mean, I, I think sometimes the problem comes in is you start thinking that the experience of the Holy Spirit has to be in some sort of group setting. It has to be where there's an event where there's some yeah, yeah. powerful person in ministry that can, can facilitate the transaction. And, and, and in a way, that's the way it happened with me the first time. Church service, people laid hands, prayed, it happened. But then for me, I can remember distinctly a year or so later i'm by myself in my my office at, at work and it's lunchtime and i'm praying and i don't remember when i'm praying but i'm seeking god for something and i had this experience of of salt water just pouring mm -hmm. down over my head and i mean i was really thinking i'm soaking wet now here in my suit and it was this this experience of of the love of God yeah. just pouring out on me in a physical sense with salt water, and I remember it specifically being salt and not fresh water, and and just immediately bringing a flood of tears to my yeah. eyes. Very experiential, very touchy feely, but I'm by myself, yeah. and it was just like I don't know the Father telling me, "I love you, yeah. I love you, and my love is on you." and this is something that, that I want you, as weird as it might sound to other people, this is something that I want you to look back on and, and know is one of those, those trail markers yeah. know, in the path that I've got for you. Well, I think what you said too is really important. You said one of the things you came away from that experience with was feeling the love of the Father yep. in such a powerful way. Yep. And that's part of the Holy Spirit's job description. It says in Romans 5, I think it's verse 5, that God has poured out the love of the Father into our hearts, in, like meaning our heart's seat of emotions. He's going to make us feel it, but he's done it through his Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so that's, you know, what does the baptism of the Holy Spirit do for you? Well, in one sense, and maybe the biggest sense, is it it solidifies the fact that you are loved by God. Yeah. Not that his love has changed, but your experience of it, your knowledge of it, your certainty of it, in a lot of ways, that's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is supposed to do yeah. in a person. Yeah, no, I think so. And it's, um, it's interesting as you go through... Um, discussions with people on what their experience was like it really does vary a lot oh yeah i mean it's not yeah. always somebody in a meeting somewhere where they went down to the front and had hands laid on them and yeah and then it happened i mean i can remember one a secretary i had one time telling me that 20 years before she'd been seeking the holy spirit wanting to get filled with the holy spirit got prayed for in church services nothing ever happened and she's washing dishes at her kitchen mm -hmm. window looking at her kitchen window mm -hmm. at her garden one day and all of a sudden She's just flooded yeah. with the Holy Spirit coming on her, and she couldn't hardly stand up. It's like, how does that happen? What's going on? Well, and another that's another important point, because it's not supposed to be a one-time experience. Yeah. Like Paul tells us in Ephesians, to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I think that's important, because mm -hmm. it can it can happen while you're washing dishes. Yeah. It can happen in a, a public, you know, like a gathering, where we are worshiping or praying for each other. Um, it can happen in a variety of places, and that's the whole point, mm -hmm. is it's not supposed to be this... You know, it's, a little, it's different than justification. Justification yeah. happens once. Yeah. I've received Christ, I'm justified. That's not going to happen again yeah. because that's that moment of salvation. But the filling of the Holy Spirit, it's going to happen in a variety of places if we if we welcome it. Yeah, yeah and I, I guess in my thinking when this has evolved over time, I mean, I, I used to have this idea, okay, I'm going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And as long as I, I keep myself tight and right with God, yeah. then I'm going to stay full of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the reality is that, that multiple fillings come in as temporary things. Yeah. I mean, I think God intends them to be temporary yeah. things. And when you look at the New Testament in terms of how it happened with, with the apostles and others, it came in for a purpose, for the particular moment. And mm -hmm. not that it doesn't have a carryover effect, but it was, it was something like for Peter where he got filled in order to preach, mm -hmm. and then who knows what happened after that, but apparently he had to get filled again yeah. mm -hmm. in order to preach again a mighty yeah. sermon, and then time goes on and he got filled again. So I, I think it's something that we, we need to understand um, is not going to keep us on a spiritual high, an yeah. emotional high, I should say, you know, forever, but 
there's ebbs and flows in life. And we, we look at the reality of how it goes and understand we need to continually be, again, stewarding, seeking the presence of the Holy yeah. Spirit when we know we need it. And I think, again, it, that points back to the relational nature. Of it. <clears throat> it's not like God's giving us this feeling like, okay, you're on your own now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that wouldn't be good for me. <laughs> I would take it and run. But he says, no, I'm going to put this together in such a way where you're having to come back. Yeah. has to come yeah. back to relationship. has to come back to seeking me, which I think is really the mercy of the Lord in our yeah. lives.